Hello everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I'm going to be reacting to your assumptions about me. Uh, I've seen this one going around and I just thought it would be a bit of fun. I know that people have tons of assumptions about me, whether you're willing to admit them to my face or not, that I think will just be so much fun to dispel, and some of the things I got are pretty funny. So I asked both on YouTube and on Instagram what your assumptions about me are, and now we're gonna go over some of them. There were a lot of assumptions about me that related to tea and coffee, and so I am sorry to disappoint you, I do not prefer tea to coffee, I prefer t coffee to tea, though it wasn't always that way. When I lived in the UK, I drank way too much tea, but since returning to the US where the tea honestly just isn't as good, I have become a typical American coffee drinker. There was someone who said I drink too much coffee, but I actually limit myself to one cup a day on the weekdays. On the weekends, I do one French press of coffee, which is basically two cups. Although when I am on a deadline and I'm going to coffee shops, I can pound a lot of cold brew, so maybe I do drink too much coffee. <laughs> Someone says uh, I am not an insomniac, but I don't sleep a substantial amount. I am a workaholic which honestly is a pretty fair assumption given all the stuff that I do, but I am pleased to inform you, I love sleep. Sleep is one of my favorite things and I make sure to get eight hours of sleep a night. Sometimes it's only seven, but I get way more than average sleep that you're supposed to get. Eight hours is recommended and I do everything in my power to get that sleep. So I am not an insomniac, though I am a night owl and I get plenty of sleep. Am I a workaholic? I don't think so. I always find time to do the things that give me pleasure. So I don't think so. Uh, I prefer nights in to nights out. I mean, yeah. <laughs> also got some assumptions that I'm an introvert. Yes, <laughs> totally nailed it. Oh, this is a good one. I don't have a Mac. I am a PC girl. Yes, I am. I don't know if you got this because I've said this before. Or you're just smart or you notice that I use a Pixel phone. Hardcore PC girl just going all the way back largely because, frankly, I didn't grow up with a lot of money, and who can afford a Mac if you don't have a ton of money? Mac stands don't come in my comments. I know everything that you're going to say to me. I am perfectly happy to be a PC stan. I like open source and all of that jazz. Plus, I like gaming, and if you like gaming, PC's better for desktop gaming. And actually, that brings up an assumption that didn't come in these particular comments, but has shown up on my channel before, and that is the weird assumption that I have a ton of money, and I come from money, and I don't. Um, I'm a pretty typical lower middle class person. You know, it's the kind of thing where, like, things are comfortable, but you never take vacation. Uh, you know, my mom did hand-me-downs and sewed my clothes when I was younger. You know, I needed a scholarship to go to college. I would say I'm reasonably comfortable now because I work my butt off to support myself, but some months are still tight. I'm not rich. I know my apartment looks kind of nice, but you guys only see like the sole clean like square of it. Oh, if only you knew. Someone thinks that after a stressful day, I unwind by listening to Florence and the Machine. Surprisingly, no. You want to know like my musical sweet spot? Rikes up. They are my go-to. I can listen to them on endless repeat. I will link down below to some of my favorite videos by them, you know, songs by them. They are a Norwegian DJ duo who pair with really good songs, you know, songstresses like Robin and Suzanne Zunfor, and I adore Roik's Up. That's more of my unwind music. You hate your English teachers. I loved my English teachers, which actually ties into another assumption. Someone said I was the teacher's pet, and I'm Sorry to say that you called it. I liked school. I got along very well with all of my teachers, with a few exceptions. I had some feuds with a few teachers. You know, what always got me was, and it was they were almost always male guys, it was those dudes who thought girls weren't good at math. And while I did struggle with math, it wasn't because girls aren't good at math. I just needed a little extra help. And so when they would condescend to me, honestly, that made them my enemy. And I'm not going to respect someone who doesn't respect me. So I did have a few teachers where we butted heads a bit, but I loved my English teachers and I was 100% the teacher's pet. Um, I loved my English teachers in school, so sorry. This one's funny. Uh, you had glow-in-the-dark stickers on your ceiling as a kid. No, I did not. I come from, a, I don't know if it's an odd background, but it's definitely very particular. Like, I don't 
like stickers to ruin things. No bumper stickers on my car. I, and I got that from my mother. So yeah, no way we were ever putting stickers on, on the wall. I don't think I ever drew on the wall. I was never that kid. I was very disciplined because my mom taught me the value of the things that we have, probably because we were renters and you couldn't ruin the walls or the ceilings because you know, we're not made of money. You don't say glass is half empty or do I say that it's half full? You wouldn't drink out of a glass either way because you prefer to drink out of a chalice filled with the tears and crushed dreams of your enemies that were obliterated by your words of harsh reality. I don't generally like to drink the tears of my, my enemies or people whose dreams I've crushed. My thing with half full, half empty with a glass is more like, ooh, what's in the glass? I'd like to drink it because I'm always thirsty. And, and, and I know that that's supposed to measure why you're, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. I know I'm going back to like the root of this rather than the crushing people's dreams part. I'm more of a pragmatic realist. So what's in the class? This one's funny. Uh, you're one of those people who actually like lima beans. I've never had lima beans, sorry. You don't love living in LA, but you couldn't imagine living anywhere else. I actually love living in LA and I can 100% imagine living somewhere else. I ache to return to the East Coast, to be perfectly honest. I spent the first 26 years of my life as an East Coast girl and there are aspects of it that I super, super miss. But I also love how the West Coast has kind of mellowed me. Yes, this is the mellowed version of myself. Don't laugh. Uh, I love, I actually really love LA. Uh, I'm here for the time being, but I I can, I can imagine myself living somewhere else. Here's a good one. Uh, you don't have any brothers and sisters and you weren't a girly girl growing up. Indeed, I am an only child, though I technically have two half sisters. So like I have sisters, but we didn't grow up together. So yeah, I'm an only child. I kind of was a girly girl growing up, to be honest. I always loved pink and purple. I never had problems with those colors. I loved my little ponies and Care Bears, and I loved playing Wizard of Oz and dressing up. And today, as an adult, I love dresses and makeup and pink. So I actually kind of am a girly girl, but I was always a diehard feminist. I was that ball busting girl who was kind of like, what? You don't think girls are as smart as boys? Fight me. So I was a girly girl, but I was pretty fierce, so. And also I l legitimately would say that to the boys, so try me. I thought this one was funny. It, you don't know me at all. Uh, you pay for the Netflix account that at least five people have access to. No, Netflix passwords are sacred. That's my money. That's my account. I have never given it out no one gets to have any of my accounts. I am not about that nonsense, so sorry. Then I actually love this one. It's the one person who's actually really honest about their assumptions about me. And they said that at first, like the first video of mine that they saw, they thought I was strict and a bit blunt. Yeah, I am I am pretty like, it's funny, I think of myself, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm flexible in the sense that I don't like die on hills and like I'm cool with you, do, you doing you, but I definitely have fixed ideas about what I think and then I'm happy to share them. I'm definitely pretty blunt, though I try to be as kind as possible. What I loved about this assumption is it's so hilarious to me because I know and, and very few of you, because I understand this isn't a non, you're a bit afraid. Um, I'm intimidating and a lot of people assume that I'm, I won't say mean, but I've had people who I am friends with say, I was really intimidated by you before I actually started talking to you or met you. And I'm, I was expecting more assumptions like that, to be honest. I promise I'm really nice, but I can see why I'm a little bit intimidating. I know that that is something that I project. <laughs> which just one of those things you have to accept about yourself. Everyone wants to be liked, but it's like, eh, I come across a bit strict and blunt. We're gonna go with that, yeah. This one was fun. Uh, you're the type of person that at least smiles when you get a gift that you didn't want slash need because the gifter was thinking about you and trying to give you something they thought you would use. Yeah, this is definitely me. I learned this from my mom, but also you'd be amazed. I'm delighted by most things that people are thoughtful enough to give to me. I think part of this gratefulness comes from being a Christmas baby. I was born six days before Christmas, and if you were born in December, anywhere close to Christmas, you know the horror of the combo gift and or the, I'm sorry, I can't attend your birthday party because Christmas or no gifts. 
Uh, so I'm honestly grateful anytime someone's thoughtful enough to give me anything, and especially as I've gotten older, I adore practical gifts. Like, you give me socks? I think that's kind of an awesome gift. Like, half the gifts my mom gives me now as an adult are just, like, ridiculously practical, and I'm grateful for all of them. So, I'm def- but I'm definitely someone who's very gracious and- and grateful. I have never returned a gift, and I don't re-gift. I try to be pretty nice. You have more female friends than male friends, 100% accurate. I will admit, like many young women, when I was a much younger girl, I kind of had more of the male-female balance and every, you know, every once in a while I had the thought of like, the boys are cool to hang out with. Thankfully, I got over that real quick. And friendships with women have been the most rewarding and deep in my life. And definitely the majority of my friends are women now, uh, partly because when you write YA, <laughs> and all of your hobbies are dominated by women, it's not that hard to be friends with mostly women. But yeah, I love female friendships. I just find them so deep and rewarding, and they've made me a better human being and a better woman. So yeah. You're very academic. Yeah, I, I was pretty academic, especially in like high school and college. I adored college. But honestly, now that I've graduated and I don't have homework and all my time is my own time and I have an income and I can buy whatever I want, I do not miss school and will not be going back. So I was academic. I still am a little, but do not miss homework or tests or studying. You have a Disneyland season pass. No, because your girl is not made of money, but also your girl doesn't have a car. And it's not that easy to get to Anaheim from Hollywood without a car. And so I just wouldn't use it enough to have it be worth the money. I do have a Universal Studios season pass because it's very close to where I live and in fact where I work. So it's super easy for me to go to Wizarding World of Harry Potter. And even then I only go a couple times a year. So definitely don't have a Disneyland pass. A ton of people thought I had a cosplay phase or did cosplay. I have never done cosplay. I have just never been that person. Like even as a kid, I wasn't that great about dressing up for Halloween. Like of course I did, but I loved hyper realistic costumes and I would just get really easily embarrassed. And that has definitely carried into my adulthood. I'm very easily embarrassed, especially with dressing up. And I'm also lazy. I don't have any sewing skills. I'm cheap. Uh, but I also have pride. And the thing about cosplay and cosplayers that I really respect and admire are the ones who go above and beyond and they source their own materials and they painstakingly and lovingly make their own costumes. And I don't have the wherewithal, the money, the time, the skills to do that. Plus then there's the embarrassment of, I'm probably not gonna put it on and walk around a con in it. Um, I'm just way too self-conscious. So I have never done cosplay. Interesting, interesting, but I love cosplayers. It's just not for me. Someone guessed that I'm an INFJ. Bingo, I am. It's so funny because it's supposed to be the most rare personality type, and yet almost every single writer I know has it. I think it's probably the most common writer personality type, so good guess. Uh, you're absolutely not a dog person. Okay, ish. I am a cat person. I adore my cats. And since I have had cats in adulthood, like it's like all my dreams coming true. But I grew up with dogs. I was a dog person, so to speak, for the majority of my life. I loved my puppies who I had, and it just hasn't been realistic to have a dog since I went off to college. You know, I haven't had apartments where you're allowed to have a dog or I've had a work schedule where I just couldn't, you know, commit to walking a dog. And honestly, even when I was a kid at home, I was always the worst at doing my chores and walking the dog. My mom would get mad at me. Um, I love having a dog, but I love that cats use their litter box. It just makes it easier for me. So I am a cat person, but I wouldn't say I'm not a dog person. My dream dog, someday I want a Newfoundland, a giant fluffy nanny dog. I, I want one so bad. And then I'll have fluffy dogs and fluffy cats. That's, that's kind of my dream of life. <laughs> but I need like a nice house and I need a schedule where I can have a dog. People who piss you off end up in a body bag. <laughs> Dang, you think I kill people? Um, no. People who piss me off, I leave them alone. Because the thing is that I believe in karma. And I believe that most people who are, you know, awful people, they're assholes, they're bitter, they're mean, they're going after people. I believe they dig their own graves and I don't have to do anything. I don't have to murder anyone or put them in a body bag. I watch them bury themselves, essentially. And yes, that is a very Slytherin answer. I am definitely a Slytherin claw. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't put them in body bags. I just wait. 
you don't like spicy foods. I do like spicy foods, sorry. Though I have a particular spice profile that I love, so I adore Thai spices and Indian spices. So the spices that you find in those food cultures, Thai especially, like I can go to a proper Thai restaurant. I usually ask for a medium because if it's a proper medium, not like a they don't think you can handle it medium, it's just a perfect spice level, but I have done a hot before and not died. And same thing with Indian food, but I will say I don't love like jalapenos, so I don't kind of like the higher spice flavors and profiles that are say in Mexican food, but in like Thai and Indian, I love those spices because like the heat level comes from different ingredients. So, but yeah, I, I, oh, I actually do like spicy foods. You enjoy sparkling water. I hate sparkling water, like loathe. Hate it, hate it, hate it, won't drink it. Still water all the way, tap water is fine as long as it's filtered. You like cheese, I love cheese. How could you tell? I went on a writing retreat in a cheese town. I love cheese. You have a 10 p.m. bedtime. No, I am a night owl. I'm. It's a good day if I get into bed before midnight, but I don't actually go to bed at midnight because I read before I sleep. So yeah, it's a good day if I get in bed by midnight. You have a lot of cats. No, I have two cats. So let me tell you about my cat limit. <laughs> I have a cat limit. This is partly because I do love cats, and if you left me to my own devices, yeah, maybe I'd have too many. Uh, first of all, because I live in a delightful, but moderately sized one bedroom apartment, and when you have too many cats in a small space, it is gross. It's real gross. It's not good for the humans. It's not good for the cats. That's actually, if you have too many cats in a small space, it's cruelty to animals, to be perfectly frank, to get kind of into that territory. It's, this is why hoarding situations are bad. Uh, it's animal cruelty. So small space, too many cats. Once or twice I did cat sit and I had three cats in my apartment and man, it smelled real bad. And I was like, ooh, two cat limit. But also I have a two cat limit because I am a single woman and I would like to date men at some point and honestly once she has surpassed two cats it can be a real red flag stereotypes i know but two cat limit for myself two cat limit you don't like nonfiction. this one came from instagram and i assume they don't watch my channel because you know i give advice all the time that i think reading nonfiction is great for fiction writing i actually adore nonfiction. i read nonfiction more than i read certain fiction genres so that one's wrong uh, the assumption that I'd be really fun to chat with at a conference. I won't lie. I am pretty fun to chat with at a conference. Buy me a drink. You're the really fun friend. I don't actually think I'm the fun friend. I think I am a fun friend, but I'm usually not actually the center of the click fun friend. I'm more of like the planning friend. I often am like the friend that brings disparate groups of people together and let other people be the fun friend. I'm the organizer friend. I'm the organizer friend, but I, I, I certainly can be fun. And then finally, not a slash fun, a ton of you thought I was a good friend, that I am the motherly friend, that people come to me for advice, and yes, I, I wouldn't say I'm the world's greatest friend, but I do try to be a good friend. I, I try to be the person who listens, who is circumspect, who is there for her friends, who is just kind of solid and dependable, a little bit of fun, and I, I do love giving advice, as you can tell from this channel, so thank you that you all think I'm a good friend. Um, that's it for your assumptions about me. Y'all gave me, some of them were fun and a little bit off the wall, lots of softballs, which are always fun, um, and yeah, I, I enjoyed this one. Maybe the next time I do this, I'll do it anonymously. <laughs> See what you really think about me, <laughs> though I can guess. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Maybe we'll do this again. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Let me know down below in the comments. Did you also have some of these assumptions about me? Is there anything I've told you that really surprises you? Any assumptions you missed that you, you didn't get the YouTube comment thread or the Instagram thread? Assumptions you want to throw my way? Let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and as always, even though it has nothing to do with this video, happy writing.